Welcome back, all our 40K fanatics out there. I'm DJ. And I'm Lane. And we're here to give you another Warhammer 40K battle report. <sighs> After a week of a lot of pain, a lot of pain, I'm on my feet. Because of how bad I beat you? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, after a week of a lot of pain and suffering, I am back on my feet and ready to play some Warhammer. And I'm not going to go easy on him. There is no rest for the wicked here. Today, though, I will be letting the Imperial agents take a break. We've uh, I've been doing a lot of work with them, but uh, Lane's bringing something that honestly has been something I've been waiting and terrifies me in the meta because I'm not going to play it. Never would play it. Filthy space marines. Blood Angels. Bloody, bloody, Blood Angels. That's right. So we're going to be seeing Blood Angels here today, and I will be bringing back the Necrons. Here it is for all my Cronies out there. I know a couple of people have said, man, they wanted to see the Necrons again. Well, here you go. With the Obeisance failing, something I was working on at the end of Leviathan, that now with everything with Pariah Nexus, it's going to mm -hmm. be really interesting to see if there's a shift with it. Because it was a strong list, it just could not cr uh, cross that... 80 point threshold which is really important in a tournament especially like gts and stuff like that where at the end of it all that's something that's really important and really kind of matters mm -hmm, definitely you, you know i mean you want your army to be able to win you want it to be able to perform but it would be terrible to have go five and oh and score like 60 yeah, 60 terrible. 60 60 and you go oh okay well i'm in seventh place because i scored uh whatever that is you mm -hmm. scored 60 points on every game or something close to it but who all right so blood angels here today we've been waiting for this because of the points yeah i finally got points for these guys uh i've never played blood angels before in this edition or any other uh i i, I actually i did in second edition the first marines i ever painted up were blood angels i forgot to take a picture of those to show you guys <laughs> still have some of my second edition uh blood angels from I 1995. They're the best paint models you've ever painted aren't you they? know they're not that bad i still had a good eye for detail no no technique or skill but um no so uh we the blood angels remember our first yeah uh, the Blood Angels uh, look like a lot of fun. I got the you know the army box, so we have uh, some Death Company uh, jump intercessors. We are Death Company with jump packs. We've got some Sanguinary Guard. I got the old Sanguinary Guard and, and you know bought some off of eBay and painted them up. But um, the first list I built with Blood Angels, I put everything I wanted in the list, and I had about four thousand points of stuff. So. There are lots of things in this that are not in this list that I would probably take in a competitive list. Uh, there's no jump pack intercessors. They're obviously great in Liberator Assault Group, getting the plus one attack and plus two strength. They're super strong uh, skirmish units. So uh, there's none here. There's no Sanguinor. Uh, there's just there are a ton of things I wanted to play. So definitely leave comments letting me know what you guys have been running in Blood Angels, what's been working for you. There were just a few things that I wanted to try out, specifically uh, a big old brick of Stern Guard uh, with a Sanguinary Priest and a Lieutenant that a, uh, a viewer made some comments about and suggested. So I thought, yeah, we'll give that a try. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, the couple of the points went down for some things. So I'm actually happy to see tri uh, Triarch Praetorians are actually starting to look feasible in mm -hmm. comparison. Uh, one of the things we were discussing is the fact, like like you said, jump intercessors and where their points are versus what Triarch Praetorians' points were. And it's just not as comparable. Even though, yeah, Praetorians can reanimate in theory, it's still just not comparable for that jump infantry. And now they're down to, they're still more expensive than assault intercessors, which How many makes sense. Uh, I think they're down to a hundred flat. Okay. But it's, and it's still, it makes sense that they're more expensive than assault intercessors because of the fact that you can reanimate, you can bring models back. So if you're the exact same point as an assault intercessor, then you're just getting free models. Plus they're T5. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, arguably better weaponry than a standard assault intercessor i'd say like stock no cp no detachment buffs triarch praetorians are better mm. but then when you start throwing in stratagems and oath a moment and detachment buffs that's where the assault intercessors are able to step it up and come up to there i mean you will mine because i'm running with rod of the covenant ap22 damage so mm. every hit is going to take a marine down yeah so that's why i say like Stat for stat data sheet, the Praetorian's a better data sheet, toughness five. But once you start adding those attachment bone, it's one thing that the Triarch Praetorians don't really get is access to any detachment bonus outside of Obeisance Phalanx, mm -hmm. which has some actually really, really good ones. Uh, the plus one to wound 
is huge because then I can go up to twos to wound on a squad of Marines and just slap them off the table. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, two, okay, slapped off the table a standard squad of Marines that has like, it, like the, the salt intercessors again, or just regular intercessors, not right. talking about like aggressors and stuff like that. that no, no, not talking about aggressors, ha -ha. terminators. Yeah, right. Just smack a terminator and go, ha ha, two damage. Ha ha. I have three wounds. Punch you in the face, Necron. No. So, all right, let's uh let's jump over, look at these lists, and get this game started. I'm ready to I'm ready to play. I'm ready to roll some dice. Let's do it. Lane, what you got? All right. So today I am running Blood Angels in the Liberator Assault Group Detachment. As always, I'm going to rip through this list pretty quickly here. But if you want more detail and how I plan to use it and how I came up with everything, DJ and I both did separate army uh, videos where you can kind of listen to how we talk about our, our plans around them and all the, the abilities of the units. But today I only have 1,975 points. Couldn't get any closer to 2,000 than that. But uh, as I said, Blood Angels in the Liberator Assault Group, we have six characters. I have a regular Space Marine Captain with a Rage-Fueled Warrior. I have a Captain in Gravis Armor with Speed of the Primarch. I've got uh, Commander Dante. We've got Lamartis. We've got a Lieutenant with a Gift of Foresight. And we have a Sanguinary Priest. Uh, battle line, I do have one five-man Assault Intercessor squad. They'll be led by the Captain. We do have an Impulsor to tr uh, transport them around in. I've got a six-man Aggressor Brick. Uh, that will be riding around in a Land Raider. We've got the ten-man Death Company Marines. They'll be led by Lamartis. The Land Raider Crusader. This is the Crusader, uh, the Bolter one that has a transport capacity of 16. Six man Sanguinary Guard with the Encarmine Blades. We have a 10 man Stern Guard squad. Glad to bring my Stern Guard back in the channel. And then we've got, you know, a five man Scout squad. Uh, DJ, what are you bringing today? All right, so here's my Necron Obeisance Phalanx. So uh, for this list, I have two of the Triarch Stalkers, two Canoptic Reanimators. Two five mans of the Triarch Praetorians. And my battle line is going to be uh, getting buffed by Illuminar Zeris, Lane's best friend. Nope. Then we have three ten mans of the Immortals, two with Tesla, one with the Gauze Blasters. We have three Overlords, one Translocation Shroud Overlord, two Chronomancers, one Plasmancer. And I think that's it for my characters I'm attaching. And those are going to be attached in sort of uh, different assorted ways during deployment we'll talk about. And of course, we still have Lane's absolute favorite Necron of the ages. Here he is, his best friend, the Psychomancer. Listen, I got a lot of speed today. Uh, no matter whether it's strategically important or not, uh, I'm going to come after him and kill him. He's crazy. Also, you know what Dante does? He makes you take battle shocks in the fight phase. So I am going to uh, psychomancer you. Okay. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, my character loadout is crazy because I got a bunch of characters. So when I actually deploy them, we'll talk about who's where and who's what with the enhancements and everything else. Because it's, I, I mean, it's like two characters per immortal unit. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I have shields again. A bunch of guys with shields because, you know. Went from shields to shields. What's interesting is that this army actually does play like a better Imperial Agents because of the fact that we're basing a lot of it off the Breachers and how the Breachers work with the reroll wounds. Doing the same thing here, except I got better guns on the Immortals. Mm -hmm. Better range, better toughness, and stuff like that. Um, one thing I want to bring up, we'll see if this happens. Lane and I were having a late night discussion one day, and I was talking to him about this Land Raider Crusader. Mm -hmm. And I'm waiting for this to happen. Because the Land Raider Crusader, if you don't know, has... The grenades keyword. Sure does. So theoretically, you can grenade with the Land Raider, then charge with the Land Raider. Tank shock. And then tank shock with the Land Raider. That is a bunch of more. That's two CP, but it is a bunch of mortal wounds. It'll also be seven attacks at strength 10 in combat when he charges with the uh, Blood <laughs> Angels buff. Yes, every single unit gets nice. the Blood Angels buff. So he gets up to strength 10 with seven attacks. Still only hit on fours, but I man, just, so. just run three Crusaders. What are you doing, <laughs> right. Lane? Come on. All right, let's get started. Lane, out or even? Even. And it's even. Do you wish to deploy first or second? Yeah, I'll drop first. Makes sense because you have the scouts. Mm -hmm. I do not. I have. I'm. I'm just staying in my deployment zone today. No. No fanciness with that. All right. We'll be back after deployment. And we are deployed. Lane, talk to us about what we are doing here today. We are playing the glorious game of Warhammer Forty Thousand. 
Our deployment today is Crucible of Battle. We uh, have a primary mission of Purge the Foe. Uh, kill one, kill more. Hold one, hold more. Uh, four points for each of those things you do. And they modified this for um, a Pariah Nexus in that in round one, you can get the kill points, but you can't get the kill more because uh, it was a little uneven uh, there. But yeah, and then our special rule today is raise the banners, battle line units. Uh, they control an objective at the end of the turn. You get a point uh, for each unique objective you do that on. So you can get up to five points across the, the table. All right, so for the Necrons, we are, as you can see, we are fully deployed up. Look at that. I'm fully on the line, ready to engage some Blood Angels. It's almost like you're not worried about my shooting threat. Yeah, yeah, you, you'd almost think I, I, it's like you have no real long range. Uh, with that, though, I do need to get myself into positions, so I am kind of up on the line. It all depends on who goes first and second into a lot of that aspects. So I have one stalker over here. We're just going to go right to left. We've got the one stalker set up over here, and then we have a line of Lich Guard to provide a shield. Now, what I did was I put down some of my drops first until I seen what Lane was able to do, since I, could, I have a lot more drops than he does. I was able to burn out uh, some of the drops to see what he was doing. So if he chooses to go advance and charge crazy, I should be able to have the Lich Guard be at least something that can absorb those first round combats and stuff like that, and they're better suited for that. The actual failings of Immortals and everything like that is all over here in these Immortals. Zerus is back there. He's not hiding. I just ran out of room of where to put him. And then the second Stalker up over here, as I said, well, where my enhancements are, so the Lich Guard have minus one to hit in combat, hopefully make them a little more resilient going into the Blood Angels. And then this squad of Immortals, the Silverbacks, they are going to have rerolling hits versus units on objective as their enhancements. A bunch of Resurrection Orbs, our Triarch Praetorians are in Deep Strike, and Lane's bestest friend for Everest is hanging out right over here. So he's going to be able to battle shock some buddies and, uh, you know, cost, cost Lane some uh, some strats on CP. That's at least the goal. He dies first today. <laughs> All right, Lane, what are you doing? All right, so we got some scouts out here. The do still have a scout move. They infiltrate and have a scout move. So depending on whether I go first or second, they'll be able to scooch around a little bit. We got the Stern Guard with the bolters uh, ready to go here. And the Stern Guard have the Lieutenant and the Sanguinary Priest attached to them. We've got an Impulsor with uh, the Captain in there with five Assault Intercessors. We have a Land Raider with the Aggressors and the Gravis Captain in there ready to go. And then the Sanguinary Guard ready to jump out and start... Uh, uh, get on some objectives, tangling things up a little bit. And then we've got the Death Company in Deep Strike with Lamartis. So as far as this goes, uh, what do you think? Do you want to go first or second into this matchup? Oh, anytime I want to wrap it in, Gress, I always want to go second. So Gotcha. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going first, uh, just so I can kind of spread out and open the board up a bit. Uh, we do have some scout moves. I have the Triarch Stalkers that can scout move for eight, and you have the Scouts that can scout move. Yep. All right. Let's see. And it looks like the Blood Angels will be going first. All right, so we got a couple scout moves, and then I believe it's time to play the game. First game with Blood Angels is off to a terrible start. We pulled Marked for Death and Overwhelming Force. Oh, yeah, DJ, what did you mark for death? Uh, things you can't see. Okay. <laughs> things <laughs> yeah, I can't like see. Re like Reanimator, Reanimator, uh, uh, Lich Guard, sure. stuff that you can't see. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and speaking and of... Uh, overwhelming force, nothing is on objectives, so I cannot kill anything. Good tech there. But real quick, Triarch Stalker moved forward on the scout move. Mm -hmm. This one kind of scooted back a little bit on its scout move. Mm -hmm. And then Lane scouted his scouts. I scouted them on the objective, and then they scouted and then they moved off. Uh, I did get Overwatch in the movement phase here, uh, and the Triarch Stalker picked up one of my Stern Guard. Uh, I did spend one CP on the Stern Guard to advance and shoot and charge. Um, and now they're battle shocked. Yeah, now they're battle shocked. Uh, not really great for them as far as being exposed. They'll be killed, I suppose, next turn. But I just wanted to kill something. So we're going to put some shooting into this thing and then maybe fight it too. Uh, we'll see if we get anything taken care of there. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to have some fun with these guys. Uh, they're going to die now because there are a whole bunch of mortals that are going to come at them. But... Um, yeah, so we advanced and uh, spent a CP to advance and shoot and charge with them. I shot at the Triarch Stalker a whole bunch of times. Got him down to what, five wounds yes. in the shooting because um, we're doing some lethal hits, a couple dev wounds coming through this unit. Okay, the Lieutenant, I was so excited about the Lieutenant. 
Uh, he shot with his pistol. He rolled a one to hit, and then it was out the moment, and it rolled again. and rolled another one to hit. So I had to use the flip of six enhancement, uh, gift of foresight, to, to, on the hit roll and couldn't use it on the dev wound roll. So I was very sad that it failed. Uh, hopefully the lieutenant at least survives that he can do that next turn. Uh, we'll see what happens. Anyways, uh, we charged in <clears throat> and finished him off in combat. <laughs> I only got to swing with a one power fist uh, from the sergeant here, and that's all it took to take the last five wounds off of the off the stalker. So we got our kill, uh, but now, of course, we're out here in the open, and we are battle shocked, and uh, we, might, we might die. So on to DJ's turn. Well... <sighs> My secondaries weren't that much better. Looking at engage on all fronts and uh, establish locus. So I don't want to fully move into the center yet. So we're not looking at establish locus. So we're instead, we're just going to try and do a baby engage just to score some points. So we did advance a Triarch Stalker, which means it's probably going to just get blown up. And we'll have no Triarch Stalkers for the rest of the game. But I want to make sure I'm on the board with some secondaries moving forward. Especially since we're going to try and tip the scales a little bit and see if we can't score points. Uh, you know, trading points better by just removing this squ entire squad off the field. Oh, man. So how we're doing that? Well, we move the Lich Guard into a little bit of a circle here just to kind of protect, uh, just to get ready to make a push on the center. And then we brought this squad up, the squad of Immortals up. They're going to shoot and then use the Chronomancer to go back and tag the objective so that we can still get our, uh, so we can get the banner on the home field objective this turn. Psychomancer moved back just to help us zone out for one turn since we still have a deep strike threat of the Death Company. Uh, they can't wrap an ingress right now, but they could deep strike next turn. Over here, this squad just moved up so they can charge if there's anything left at, with, with this squad. And then we did move this squad over here. They're not going to be getting Zerus's buff, but we'll still be able to shoot and do some extra damage, put a little bit extra damage into that squad because we need that entire unit and characters and everything to go away so that we can at least try to make it worthwhile. Since we're losing both our Triarch Stalkers, that's like 250, 260 points, I think, right there. I think they're, I think it's 260, I think they're 130 points apiece. So that's the game plan, and a little engage. So let's do some shooting and hopefully uh, do some work to the Stern Guard. <coughs> Got him. So what happened here was we shot a bunch. And we did a lot of damage. Uh, Zerus giving that AP1 was a big help. And even though we didn't have really re-rolls or anything crazy into it, we still were re-rolling ones. And we're strength five going into T4 Marine. So we're, I selected them as my phalanx target. So I was getting plus one to wound, wounding on twos, re-rolling ones. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of damage. So we were left with just the characters and the characters were hurting. And we charged in. And Mr. Overlord, Strength 12, AP3, Flat 3, Devastating, Wound Damage, just said goodbye to the Lieutenant. And then the Immortals, a couple of them were able to barely pick up the uh, Apothecary. They weren't hitting as well. But we got them both, so we cleared that out. Um, and that is a battle line unit, so we're going to get a banner over there. We're also going to get a banner over here. And then we did engage on two, three of the two fronts with this Triarch Stalker, so we'll get a couple points there, and then I will just pitch uh, Established Locus for a command point, pass it over to Lane in his turn two. This turn, we've got no prisoners and defends, stronghold. Try to hold on to my stronghold, and I try to not take any prisoners. Uh, I just wanted to kill something turn one. Definitely knew that the Stern Guard were going to die. I should not have done that, uh, but we'll see if we get a little vengeance for him. So, uh, Sanguinary Guard, going to go into this thing here. Uh, the whatever stalker. Triarch stalker. Triarch stalker. Uh, aggressors uh, with the captain are going to go into the Lich Guard here. It'll be lots of fun. We've got the Land Raider up here on the objective. and be able to shoot through things. Scouts uh, moved back scoutily. Uh, these guys moved up. It's just kind of staging for next turn. And I did bring in my Death Company with the Martys. I got a 9-inch charge into these guys. I got 3 CP, so I can... Reroll, maybe I'll make a, a long bomb charge. If not, then next turn they'll be ready to punch some guys in their dumb robot faces. All right, let's I see what did, kind of, uh, uh, I, I, did, robot. I did rapid ingress the Triarch Praetorians. Mm -hmm. Lamartis does reduce my damage by one, but I want a little bit of extra threat there. Uh, this way, if I need to move anything off and go towards the Death Company per they fail their charge, or I just need a shield to be able to give me a little bit more time, to allow other units to clear out the Death Company because it's a big 10-man squad. 
I wanted to have something already there in position. And like Elaine said, I had an extra command point. So uh, we'll see how that works out. All right, I'm going to do a little shooting. So in shooting, we actually did some work here. Uh, the multi melta from the Land Raider got through and did six damage, and then uh, did one of the melta pistols, the Inferno pistols here, to do a little more. So oh, this guy's Dante. To, oh no, yeah, it wasn't Dante. No, Dante didn't do it. Yeah, got him down to two here, and then uh, aggressors did great. Picked up seven of the Lich Guard. Outstanding. As if it seems like there's a lot back there because DJ popped his Resurrection Orb, which you can do once per game, and brought back four of them that I killed. Because the reanimator's nearby, too, so I got four, and then I got three on the reanimator's D3. Mm -hmm. So, it's a lot. Um, that's all right. We're going to go punch them. We're going to punch them extra hard. So, we will... Uh, yeah. We'll see if we can pick them up in the shooting. And we're going to see if we can make a nine-inch charge over here. Uh, and Dante himself is going to finish off the Triarch Stalker. So, uh, <laughs> some charges. All right. So, I started with the aggressors. And finished off all those uh, Lich Guard that DJ brought into me. I forgot I was winning on twos uh, because I got up to strength 10 with these guys. And I had did the lethal or did the lance. So I was plus one uh, counteracting his minus one. So we didn't quite pick up the Overlord. He's still there. He reduces damage by one. So he's hard to kill. Or he cuts damage in half. No, reduce it by one. You're right. Reduce it by reduce one. Okay. Two to the one. Um, uh, so we did pick up the Lich Guard Elise so they can't reanimate. Uh, Dante and friends picked up the Trier Stalker. DJ did interrupt here with these Immortals uh, and... Uh, Didn't really do anything but the Overlord. Yeah, picked, picked up two. The Overlord picked up two uh, guys. Uh, so I only took another wound on another guy, so I think uh, we're good there. Um Yeah, and then we wrecked the squad. The, the Overlord there is still alive, but we picked up the squad and... The Technomancer? The, the Chronomancer. The Chronomancer, yeah. I can't keep your Mancers apart. So it was, for the purposes of, you know, kill one, kill more, and no prisoners, it was four kills. We picked up the squad, the character, the squad, and the vehicle uh, there. So uh, scored well. You know, defense stronghold still going on here, but no prisoners. We maxed out at five on four kills for um, Purge the Foe on the DJ. Cover assets and containment is what we're looking at. Can't really do recover assets. It's going to be difficult for me to get anything anywhere that's going to be able to survive. Uh, I don't know, it just this is one that I don't like seeing early on. I'm sure Lane can agree. Recover assets is kind of a, it's not one you want to see early on in the game. Uh, early turns, it's tough to score. So we're going to do containment instead. And we're going to do that with the Praetorians that we dropped in over here. And the Praetorians that we're wrapping in Grest over there. Uh, so there's that. Now, everything else. We're not going to worry about recover assets. Instead, we're going to move up with the Lich Guard, or I'm sorry, Lich Guard are gone, Immortals, and they're going to get the boost of AP1 from Xeris, and we're going to shoot at these aggressors and start doing some damage and trying to whittle them down. Then we're also going to try and hurt, uh, maybe, maybe Battle Shock him with the Psychomancer. He moved up, and so he's within six inches, so they're going to get minus two when we do that at the beginning of our shooting phase. And he'll shoot at him too. He's got a two damage weapon, so why not? Xeris is in position to charge Death Company if we need the extra support, because Xeris is a beast. And then the Immortals moved up. These are the guys that reroll hits when shooting at units on objective markers with lethal hits. And the AP, they're only one damage. Um, the, but again, Lamardis reduces the damage, so that's what we're going to hopefully try and pick some of them up there. And then we'll charge in if need be afterwards, because once again, we have another Overlord there, and uh, they smack. So... I don't think we'll pick up enough to be able to tip the scale for the uh, whatever the mission primary, but hopefully we can do enough damage to at least start reducing some of those assets down so we can clear some of the stuff out. Uh, we still got these Sanguinary Guard to deal with later in the game, but uh, that's where we got to start. We got to start doing some work, and this is where it's going to begin. All right, first things first, let's shoot. All right, so good amount of damage. Um, as far as defensive wise, Lane popped Armor of Contempt over here to reduce my AP. And then we shot. So, well, he did it when I targeted him. So over here with the Immortals that had AP1, uh, Lane had, did have some cover to slow down their damage. We shot with everybody, everything, including the Reanimator and its Strike 6 AP2-1 damage. And we dropped three of the Aggressors. And this one's down to one wound. 
So not too bad. We're going to charge in there and see if we can't hurt some more of them. Over here, we shot and we picked up six of the death company. Oh, wait, there were so we no, picked, three left. There's three the left, place. but I killed two in the previous turn. So I got four of the death company, four or five of the death company, five of the death company out of there. Several of the death. Company yes, a good amount, a good amount. Uh, Zaris picked one of them up, by the way, too. Just saying. I love giving Zaris to do. So now we're going to charge. Immortals are going to charge in. Zaris is going to try and stick a long charge. We do have a command point left. And the Immortals are going to charge in here, even though they're not an objective. We're going to see what we can do. Hopefully our full re-rolls over there can help. I know Lane does have the ability to pop a fight first, so we'll see. This could be interesting on how this all goes. Let's charge. So I'm happy with the damage we got out of here. Uh, went a lot better. Was able to pick up some units. Uh, we were able to get rid of the aggressors. Lane did use his fight first enhancement that he has on the Gravis Captain. Picking up my solo overlord, since he hates them. And then we swung in here and we lost five to the Gravis Captain of the Immortals. So I popped the res orb at the end of the phase to bring them back. Uh, we're still down two from the squad, but I didn't want to be that low. Uh, we picked up all the aggressors and did a little damage to the captain. So that's a positive there. Then over here, Zerus didn't even get a chance to fight as the Immortals with rerolling hits and wounds just smacked the remaining death company. And there wasn't much death company left, so we were able to smack and beat them up. And that boosted AP from Zerus was a big help. Unfortunately, that was only three kills for the turn, which means Lane will get that boost on the primary. And he does hold more at this current point in time. But we did score big six on containment. And that's it. We're going to kick it over to Lane. We're pitching recover assets and go to turn three. All right. So I pulled sabotage and extend battle lines. So uh, we oath these guys. We spent the captain's free strat ability to advance and charge these guys. Uh, so they're going to get in there, and we're going to go superpower, super saiyan with our, our captain here. Uh, he's going to be all charged up. Sanguinary Guard are going to jump on over here and smash into these guys. Uh, Lehman Russ is going to smash. Lehman Russ? You got a Lehman uh, Russ? No, huh? not Lehman Russ. Land, Land Raider. Raider. Uh, same initials. Same initials. So Land Raider uh, is going to smash into, what's his, Zerus? Zerus. Lehman or Zerus, yep. Zerus is going to smash him. And then we're just trying to play stay away from these guys because they do have a 12 inch move so they can either go towards that objective or this one they'll be able to get probably steal an objective from me but we're just going to try to kill as much as we can right right now and i played right through my shooting phase because the only thing that really shot uh was the land raider here he threw grenades and shot at zaris and then uh did a little only did like three damage to him through all of that because he does have a four up feel no pain so um and then he and <laughs> That was all the shooting, really, in the whole list. So then he charged in and tank shocked and fought into Zaris and got Zaris down to two wounds. Uh, Zaris did do three wounds to the land raider. Should do some work there. I charged in here with the captain and the power fist and his um, ability to do the sustain three. It wasn't super impressive. Wiped all the immortals. They were benefiting from Zaris's uh, armor contempt rule, so it reduced the damage uh, or the, reduced the AP for my attacks here. So we did pick up the Immortal Squad, but both characters are still here. Um, and then over here, uh, Dante and his crew uh, smacked pretty hard, pretty, pretty, pretty hard, and wrecked through the entire Immortal Squad here, plus the two characters. So that brings my kill count to four. I do get extend battle lines, uh, but it brings my kill count to four. For this and then dj is going to slap me back let's see what happens there extend battle lines and assassinate for this turn so extend battle lines should be relatively easy uh as long as we can clear one of these objectives so we are going to get aggressive we move these guys up and we're going to try and charge to take that objective marker we could have advanced but i want to try and do some damage to start working that thing away so we can maybe take away some assets uh, over here, after healing up, we decide to stay in combat with the Land Raider, uh, see if we can't... I, I mean, we're going to have to get lucky to take it down, but I think we're at a lucky point right now with the game, especially with the Sanguary Guard still floating on the table. Now, granted, it's only one unit, so hopefully that helps out, uh, but see what else we can do. Over here, we did just move these guys up a little bit. They're going to charge in, shoot, and everything. And then the Overlords are in position that if we really do beat up this squad really good then the Overlord can just charge into the Land Raider, try and do damage to it. Uh, Reanimator's there too. We have two command points. 
I actually might tank shock with it just to do some mortal wounds and maybe a thing that happens. And then uh, he moved out to try and battle shock those guys so they can't armor a contempt because I really need to get rid of these guys. And as well for an assassin on the character would be nice just to pick him up. The reanimator over here moved to the outside and he's going to try and shoot at these scouts and just kind of weaken them up to make Lane have to kind of take some consideration on what he does with things later on. And I don't know, maybe they'll pick him up long range later. All right, let's shoot some stuff. So I followed suit with just kind of rolling right through it because it all kind of not, not a lot happened in the shooting. It was all in the charges. So shooting wise, we just picked off one scout with a real happy little reanimator. Yay. Uh, well, was happy. And then over here, these guys, they shot. And then on their charge, thanks to re-rolling their charges, we're able to hit and smack and blow up the repulsor. It's not over there. It's actually dead. Uh, over here, oh. we shot and we're able to take out the squad, leaving just the lieutenant. We charged in, hit him. Lane spiked his in bones. And unfortunately, he had one wound left, which meant the overlord, I positioned him so he could, if I needed him, he would finish off the lieutenant or pile into the land raider to do damage over here. Sadly, he was needed to finish him off. And he rolls three devastating wounds. So not only did he finish off the lieutenant, he stomped on the body when he was done. Then over here, you see that, we, we see this down to one wound. We were able to put quite a bit of work in with this combination of everything over here. <laughs> Uh, we got a devastating wound and that uh, void blade strength 12 that helped. So it was a good amount of damage. We're actually picking around the land raider a little bit. So uh, I think I'll be able to destroy it eventually uh, at the, before this game ends. So that's it for my turn. Again, Lane did get the kill more for the turn, which is going to make it tough for me on the scoreboard. But uh, we were able to uh, pick up some assets. We got Lane down to just three, four units left. So. That'll help. Problem is, one of those units is a big old squad of Sanguary Guard. All right, over to Lane. This turn, I pulled Area Denial and Cleanse. So, I had two CP at the start of the turn. I gave my one. So, I spent one to auto pass the Land Raider and have him fall back uh, so I could score Area Denial. DJ did try to Overwatch with Zeris, but didn't roll any sixes. So we yeah, it was worth a shot. Stayed alive. He's only got one wound left. So. And I did spend a CP for him to fall back and uh, shoot. So he will be able to shoot, and we'll score area denial there. The other one was cleanse. Hey, scouts are good at cleansing, so they're going to cleanse there. And then everybody moved on this objective here. So the captain is going to cleanse here, and then we're going to try to kill. I mean, we're going to try to kill reanimator. We're definitely going to kill the psychomancer because we hate the psychomancer. Um, yeah, that's it. And I did hold more. Uh, this turn, so it puts me in a pretty good position on primaries. Now it's just going to be a matter of scoring secondaries. So shooting didn't do much. Really, the only shooting was the land. Well, shooting the land raider shot in here, try to pick up the uh, reanimator just to, to get um, more uh, points for kill more. Uh, didn't really do anything. We did manage to shoot and throw grenades at the uh, uh, psychomancer, and he died. And then we charged in and finished off. The reanimator. DJ spent the CP to reduce damage by one, uh, but I did manage to still get a whole bunch of attacks through because that that vehicle does not have a invuln. Uh, my AP three on all those attacks really made a difference, so we were still able to pick him up. So we got two kills. We did still cleanse because uh, we cleansed with the captain there and the scouts here, and then we have an area denial for five here. So ten points on secondary is good scoring turn. On to DJ. Let's see what he does. Literally just told Lane, I was like, oh, I could probably just roll through this. Not much happened. But there is one thing I want to bring up, uh, and that is some healing. So for this turn, we have Area Denial and Mark for Death. So Lane picked everything except the Land Raider. So we're going to try and finish this guy off. Uh, so we gave ourselves plus one to wound on him, and that's where we're going. So everyone, the Overlord, Zerus, and the Reanimator, we're all next to the Reanimator. And they're now all up to full health. Like nothing ever happened. I gotta say, guys, you missed some really good complaining from me about how Necrons work. I, I seriously almost want to keep a counter of how many times Lane says, I hate Necrons. I hate Necrons. So um, for this turn, like I said, we're trying to get positioned for turn five. So we did move up the Praetorians. These Praetorians, he's hanging out back here on the backfield. Actually, I'm going to scoot him even further back to all the way at the furthest point back. Yep. Ding. There you go. Uh, no, that's for my banner. The banner I put up. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
And then uh, we're just going to try and do some shooting and charges. As long as we pick up the Land Raider and the Captain, then we're golden and leaving lane with just two units left. It'll be interesting to run five, but I'm pretty sure he's got this one. All right, so shooting-wise, the Plasmancer made very quick work of the Land Raider, and that was that, so we did get the area denial. Then we came so close. He's down to one wound. Zerus shot. CP rerolled to make it so Zerus didn't take him down. We charged. We tank shot. We put him at one wound. We punched him, and he saved them all. So, so, so close. So uh, we're going to hold on to Mark for Death because we have three targets, even though Lane is about to pick up these scouts. Uh, I still have a feeling I could pick, take them out. And, uh, eh, well, we'll consider that. I might actually pitch Mark for death now, knowing that he can do that yeah. uh, cause for a different secondary, but we'll see. All right, on to Lane's turn five. My final turn five, I pulled Bring It Down and uh, behind enemy lines. So, uh, yeah, pretty easy last turn here. I just rolled through it real quick. The only thing I did was uh, the Gravis Captain passed his battle shock, and he fell back here. And then uh, the Sanguinary Guard jumped up here between Inferno Pistols and uh, their great combat. They picked up the Reanimator. Uh, scouts dropped in here from their Uppy Downy. So we do have uh, four points for Behind Enemy Line and two points for Bring It Down. And that is that for me. Let's see what DJ picks up in his last turn. So for my last turn, I had Cleanse and Behind Enemy Lines. Uh, we only cleanse with one unit. but And we did go for our Double Behind Enemy Lines for four points uh the cleanse would have gotten me what another clean double cleanse is four points as well so it gave yeah, me another give me one more yeah point. it would give me an additional point if i would have went that route with it but uh as far as for holding more instead of just taking the easy hold more here we wanted to make sure that we were going to have kill more and uh we did it in a glorious fashion so we moved up everyone charged with everyone and we were able to pick up the sanguary guard as well as that Gravis captain who is hiding back here in glorious faction. But although we own this much of the table now for the Necrons, little scouts still remain. The bravest little boys still Last survive. four models that Lane has remaining. But what matters more is the scoreboard than even with that huge push at the end of the game, a very, very strong push for the Necrons. It is a final score, Blood Angels, 91 to a Necron, 85. Ended up being super close at the mm -hmm. end. Uh, Necrons are able to push through. Per that, uh, this Purge the Foe was, uh, was a little tough for me to really catch up on those primaries early on. So that was tough. I gave up a lot of turns giving Lane Killmore because of characters attached to squads giving additional kills and not being able to capitalize back but all in all i'm happy with this test we'll talk about that more in the post game guys as always thanks for watching and we will talk to you again really really soon